Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with our brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. They're going to go out see what things came out today, see what things are on sale. Not sure everything that came out today. I know there's a couple of different things. Also, I'm going to let you guys know at the end of this video, I'm going to have some new reviews of some DVDs and Blu-rays that I received to review and talk about for you guys. Also, uh, coming up on Thursday, I filmed a brand new movie hunting video with fellow YouTuber uh, Flix and Movies, you know, Alex Leba. He does like, you know, DVD shopping videos, movie reviews, and all that kind of stuff. And that'll be going up this Thursday in the afternoon. Uh, if you guys haven't seen his channel yet, though, Flicks and Movies, I'm going to put a link for his channel below. So definitely subscribe to that and, you know, check that out. And like I said, be on the lookout for that video on Thursday. And then this weekend as well, I'm going to have a brand new uh, DVD uh, Blu-ray update going up this Saturday. So definitely be on the lookout for that one as well. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And one thing I started noticing in the Targets in the front of the stores, like right around there is they used to have like the new release DVDs and Blu-rays as well. But it seems like they stopped in like all the locations having them in the front of the stores now, at least is what I've been noticing lately. Yeah, and the big things that came out today was, you know, Arrival, you know, that's, you know, up for Best Picture. And, you know, the, they have the 4K one in here for $29.99. They have some kind of a sale thing going on right now, too. It's like a buy two, get one free, mix and match. And it's for, like, board games, activity sets, puzzles, books, and movies. So I guess if you buy, like, two of these movies, I guess, I don't know if it's new releases or, like, I guess any. Uh, if you get two of them, you get one free. So that's kind of cool if there's, like, you know, anything that came out this week that you guys want, like, two of. I guess then you would get, like like one of them free I guess that's how that works and it looks like it lasts only from the um, you know the 12th to the 18th is that's as far as I, I can tell that's what it looks like so that's kind of an interesting thing going on here and I think the edge of 17 came out today you know the Haley Steinfeld movie with Woody Harrelson I really like this one a lot I talked about this one in my last video but really really fun kind of throwback um, 80s style movie kind of vibe also has sort of a feel like Napoleon Dynamite a little bit to me and this one came out the Miles Teller movie with him and Eric Eckhart called Bleed for This this was actually a pretty well done boxing movie I feel like it didn't get a, a ton of attention but was actually a really pretty cool movie and the other one today and they have a 4k release of that one it's 27 and they have the regular uh, you know DVE and blu-ray combo of that is Billy Lynn's long halftime walk and I I really loved um, uh, Vin Diesel in this. I thought he like played like a really, really different kind of character. He's only in the movie for like maybe like 15, 20 minutes or so, but I really like the kind of role he played. It was just a very, very different part. When, and this, you know, is directed by, you know, Ang Lee, you know, who did like uh, Brokeback Mountain and, uh, you know, Life of Pi. And I always really like his stuff. It wasn't like his absolute greatest of his movies, but still was a pretty interesting movie. You know, Kristen Stewart is also in this movie as well. And Chris Tucker's in this so it was like definitely was a lot of people in this one what they have in here as well though one of the things that came out is the Beavis and Butthead uh, you know co collection here which is all of the it's basically all the, the uh, sets that have been released in the past like volumes one to, uh, through four it doesn't have though some of the like the early episodes like frog baseball the one when they go to Mexico and they drink the water and they, you know get sick and there's a couple of, like early early ones that are not on this and there was that old set that I don't know if any of you guys remember that was that came out and then ended up getting like recalled called the history of Beavis and Butthead and I remember like a couple copies of it leaked out but for some reason it ended up getting recalled before it really got a full release I, I have like an old bootleg of that that I got at like a convention a really long time ago but you know for as far as you know those wondering though this has like all four of the volumes plus the movie but not you know every single episode though of it yeah, but that buy two, get one free thing is kind of cool because, like I said, it seems like it's for, like, all different stuff in there, like the books, the music, and everything. So I don't know if you can only use it, like, twice, you know, get two things and then get one free, or you could get a whole bunch of different stuff or not, or, you know, pay on different receipts. I'm not sure how that works, but definitely, like, a kind of a cool thing if you guys, you know, want to get a bunch of new releases that came out this week. Into the Valley Thrift Store we go. Well, it looks like they put a couple new things in here. I haven't been in here in probably like two or three weeks or so. Something like that. It's been, I think, at least two weeks or so since I've been in here. And everything, I think, is like $2 for the DVDs. But I found a couple things in here in the past, so I always just kind of keep coming back to look just in case. Because you really never know what they're going to get in here. This is like a weird, this is like a UK release one in here. Every so often, those kind of ones sort of like sneak in here. 
I always remember for some reason kind of liking this movie. Every time I think of like, you know, like the presidency and people like, you know, the elections and stuff, I always think of this movie. It was actually kind of a kind of a fun movie. I, I feel like people really never really talk about this one anymore, but it was kind of a interesting movie. But like I said, we'll look through here though and see if there's anything in here different today. And there's a whole ton of like Disney VHS stuff down here. Seems like they like got in a whole bunch of like old Disney. Someone must have brought in a whole bunch. This is kind of a weird one. A day at the Magic Kingdom. I don't know if I ever bought this one. I always love these kind of things when they go to Disney. I don't know what year this one is from. I'm probably going to get this one because I don't think I have this or I might have gotten rid of this years ago. But those are some of like, my favorite things, like these old things when people go to Disney and stuff because you see like all the old stuff that's not there anymore. But like this is one you never really see on VHS, like the Black Cauldron. Kind of a cool cover on this. This is one, like I said, I've never really seen this VHS one in person. I don't know when this release one was for that one, but like I said, a whole bunch of old Disney VHS ones under here. And they have a bootleg in here of that newlywed show, that Jessica Simpson show. It's like a real bad quality bootleg. Look at the bad pictures in the back and to the discs, they're like, they're probably just like a blank, weird blank disc, see? Oh, they actually put artwork on them for these bootlegs. Well, what a weird thing of like a bootleg to come across for this. Very weird one. A lot, like I said, a lot of VHS in here though. Here's some of the other VHS in here though. Seems to be, you know, real relatively common ones. The only one was kind of different was that, you know, Disney one there though. That's kind of cool though to see this DuckTales one still sealed like this, you know, with that old, I always remember that on the bottom of Disney tapes, that little uh, paper thing on there. That's kind of cool, like I said, to see this totally sealed still. A lot of these are, are kind of sealed back here. Like this one, the Courage Under Fire. I think as well as like decoys back there as well. Yeah, I decided against that VHS thing. I guess I think I got that in the past. I have like, and like I don't really have the VCR hooked up anymore right now because like I, when I got a newer TV, it's like really hard to hook up a VCR to it. I don't know why. I don't know if you guys have had that same kind of problem, but like it's a 4K TV and for some reason like it's really a difficult thing to try and figure out how to hook it up. I don't know why, but it's like it doesn't seem to work too well, and they don't even have very many analog imports puts in it. But it was like two dollars for it, which is like I feel like with VHS, like you want to pay like for just like random kind of things, like fifty cents and stuff, but not two dollars for it. But like that's the thing going with me. I always love like those Disney things, though. Like I, I have like a million of those like souvenir things throughout the years, and the ones from Universal Studios always, always got those ones as a kid and everything. Into Walmart we go. And over here, they have Arrival as well on 4K, and that, that one's only uh, $25.96 for the 4K release of that one. And this other one came out today, a movie called Priceless. It says, like, inspired by true stories. I don't know anything at all about this one. Like, if you guys have seen this movie, let me know how this one is, or like if, if this one's worth checking out or not. And like I said, the other one here today was, you know, The Edge of Seventeen. And then this one, I believe this was today. It's kind of stuffed over here in the corner. This movie called The Crash, and it's like some kind of John Leguizamo movie but I have never heard really anything about this one um, other than that though uh, this John Travolta movie a life on the line came out which you know I saw this one this was actually kind of interesting movie it was like about line workers and it was like a you know work on power lines and I never really saw a movie about that and kind of like all the problems they have and this big storm that's kind of coming and then like I said in Target bleed for this and then they have a new Scooby-Doo movie here uh, you know Scooby-Doo Shaggy Showdown you know they they always do they get Scooby Doo like original movies like every couple of years these come out. I always remember like one of the ones I used to always watch as a kid was the Scooby Doo and the Ghoul School was like one of my favorite ones. And the other one in here today was this one, um, the Crooked Man, which was kind of like the um, Conjuring Two, the, the sort of basically that kind of story about the Crooked Man and this girl that got um, in the beginning of the movie one of her friends got killed and she got put in jail for it because they thought she killed the girl and you know she gets out of the you know the sane asylum and then of course as soon as she gets out more people start dying again and the crooked man's back it was actually kind of fun i think it was for sci-fi channel but other than that though the only other thing i see over here is this movie called um race to win here it's like i said don't know really anything about this one though it's i think it's some kind of a horse movie though 
And one of the other things that came out today, TV show wise, and it's funny they're putting it, you know, upside down the way they're putting it on the shelf. But it was uh, pretty. I actually really liked the show a lot. I only, I only started watching through a couple episodes so far. It's a guy that came back from the Vietnam War, and he gets like recruited by like these like this like, hitman group to kind of work for them and kind of forced into killing people and stuff for them. But kind of an interesting show though. But that was one of the other things that was today. And I got the you know the Menchie's yogurt that I always get on Tuesdays. And like a new thing I'm doing, you know, in these videos is you know when I get the you know the yogurt it's kind of like you know the yogurt and talking about the movies that I saw you know this past weekend and the one I saw this past weekend was John Wick chapter 2 I actually only saw the first John Wick movie like two weeks ago it was one of those movies that everyone was always telling me how good it was and I'm glad I finally watched it because I really liked it but I actually liked John Wick chapter 2 a little bit more because I felt like there was a whole lot more happening in this one and it, like they took it to even more crazy levels I really like though Keanu Reeves in these kind of roles like the this and the Matrix I think like action movies are really like what he's like absolutely best at like when it comes to like movies like you know knock knock and stuff when he has to play like somebody's more of the victim and stuff I don't I don't know I don't think he's as he's as cool in those kind of roles I think like you know action type roles like this and like you know things like Bill and Ted when he's kind of playing himself or kind of over the top like surfer dudes and stuff like those are my favorite kind of things that he does but you know genre chapter two though really was a cool cool you know um the thing that's cool about the, the John Wick movies is you know they're it's directed by a guy who's like a stunt coordinator and does like stunts in film so he's really all about the stunts and like making them as realistic and coordinated and you know choreographed as you know as good as they possibly can because a lot of the, the modern action movies you know like some of them are like really choreographed bad and like you can tell people are like faking the hits and everything like I actually thought this one was super like really really well done you know and, and hopefully it looks like because it did really well they're gonna actually make the third one because you know like if it didn't it'd be like a movie kind of like Divergent where it's like we never know if we're really gonna get the last one but I'm pretty certain we're gonna get you know the, the final chapter of John Wick you know part three but like I said, that was one that I would definitely recommend you guys see. And if you haven't seen it, though, like the 4K of the first one just came out. But definitely really like that one a lot, though. Into Best Buy we go. And they have that Scooby-Doo movie over here as well, that one that came out today, like Shaggy Showdown. Like I said, they seem like they do these like Scooby-Doo movies like every like one every year or two they come out. But other than that over here, you know, really the main other big release, like I said, was Arrival. And their uh, 4K one is $24.99. This is one that I was kind of surprised. I would have thought there would have been like some steel books or like some other editions of that. But there hasn't seemed to be any other ones. And they have this like horror thing over here, like Bloody Valentine's Favorites. I've never seen these like covers of these ones. Like, oh yeah, these are like those Monster Mayhem ones. I think there's Blu-ray releases of these ones. I think they're the old ones with a new slipcover on them, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe, no, I, oh, it's, yeah, it's the, it's the original ones with new slipcovers. But they have these of like ones for The Exorcist. They're kind of just like an effect put over them. And Poltergeist, you know, Queen of the Damned. And this and the shining, but they're kind of cool look to them. And then these other like monster ones down here were like for Dracula, Frankenstein must be destroyed, this Dracula one. So they're kind of cool. And then they have these sets of like three movies together with the you know, um, House of Haunted Hill and um, you know, Return to House of Haunted Hill, House of Wax. So that's kind of cool. But I said these are pretty cool, interesting new arc on these ones. So that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I said too, be on the lookout for my video that's going to be up on Thursday with me and Flicks and Movies. And if, like I said, if you haven't subscribed to his channel, definitely check it out below. And he's going to have a video that I did with him that's going to be going up on his channel. I think sometime this week or at the end of this week. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And like I said though, we'll have my new DVD Blu-ray update video up, you know, this Saturday. And now stay tuned for a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got from Arrow Video USA is a movie called Psychomania. This is one that I had always seen the poster for this one but had never seen it before it's actually a really really cool movie it has a you know a brand new 2k transfer on here and they have a little feature on here showing about how they like restored this movie and it was interesting how they did it, it was like they had to had a hard time finding the prints and they like laid like they found all these different versions of the print and they combined them all together to get the best picture it's kind of interesting what they were showing how they did but it's a movie it's kind of like a clockwork orange type movie like a pg clockwork orange even the main guy is a lot like malcolm mcdowell and it's kind of like that mixed with like Easy Rider and those like motorcycle kind of gang movies all into one mixed with like hippie stuff and magic and all kinds of weird stuff going on. But it's basically like about a group of like these motorcycle riders that are called the Living Dead. And they all kind of ride around and wreck havoc around the town and cause all kinds of problems. And the one leader of the gang finds out that like his mother and the, and the mother's butler have like this 
they basically the mother's butler has like never gotten older and they kind of come to discover that he had like died and he came back from the dead and like if you like believe like if you basically if you go and kill yourself and you believe you're going to come back you come back and he discovers this room in the house where they have all this weird kind of stuff going on this really trippy room and stuff and basically though the head of this gang finds out about this so he ends up wanting to kill himself so he comes back and he can becomes invincible and he ends up you know coming back and wanting to basically get all of his members of the gang to believe they will come back from the dead and go and kill themselves and become invincible and they can kind of go around and wreak havoc and he's trying to get his girlfriend to do it and then like of course though like the people these these members that are, have died people that they start when they come back they go around and start killing people and like all this kind of crazy stuff's going on and like the cops are trying to figure out what's going on they're like like they're like we just had the funeral for this this guy but then we saw someone said that they saw him out you know in, in the motorcycle jackets that they wear and everything and he, they think that he was the one that killed this woman and so they're kind of like trying to figure out what's going on and the people like you know when they die if they're like stealing these gangs clothes and trying to pin it on them and it's like a crazy thing going on of like them all getting you know killing everybody and these crazy ways that they're trying to kill themselves and it's done in like a real like comp comedic tongue-in-cheek way as well with all these weird trippy type sequences and uh trippy music and everything like i said i love this one i don't know how i had never seen this one before like i said it has a new 2k transfer in here it has an interview with the main actor in this and they even have a thing on here too with about the leather the company that like supplied the leather jackets for this movie because they were really like high quality like and they had like hand painted kind of stuff in the back the font too because the, the, this group is called the living dead the font on this really reminded me the font and you know the return of living dead it had the same drip and everything it's almost like i feel like that the jackets and stuff like the font on them kind of inspired the font for the return of living dead posters and everything like that but this is one like i said if you guys have never seen this one would highly recommend this one really fun trippy clockworth orange type motorcycle movie uh the next one here from warner brothers and this is um this has in here too a little toy of the one character from this i think there might be another version as well with batman and i'm not sure but it has the one character in this and this is the um the justice league dark the one that just came out last week and it's and it has you know the dvd and the digital copy in here and it has on here though a number of featurettes on the movie uh thing on here from the new york comic-con panel you know a lot of times when they have the comic-con panels they have panels from the san diego comic-con but this one has stuff from the new york comic-con and then it has two uh shorts on here as well like DC comic shorts that were like these type of Batman ones that I had never seen before. Like I think they were from a couple of years back. But this is basically though there's something going on and people are in the or the world are like seeing people as like villains like they're seeing people as like like these creatures and stuff and they're kind of going crazy and, and like thinking that you know like they're taking their car and like mowing down people and killing them and everything and they're kind of thinking that like just normal people because something's going on with their brains and stuff and they're thinking that these normal people are like demons and they're like going after them killing them and, and it's basically about like Batman and the superheroes trying to stop them and it deals with the Batman having to you know with the Justice League having to work with these group that kind of like are demons like but like good type demons that have the like that are trying to stop the bad demons that are kind of making people see things like this it's an interesting kind of thing it's like them all trying to work together and stop what's going on and trying to get to the bottom of what exactly they're doing and why people are kind of seeing them like this and this is like you know also it's interesting as well this is i think the second of the um you know the animated films recently that they've done that have been rated r because the last one you know the batman the killing joke was but i don't i don't think any of the other ones in the past were but it's kind of you know more of like a gritty type more adult animated ones which i think it's kind of cool that they're kind of going in that direction with these ones and like i said i haven't seen too many of these but i've seen like the dark um the batman the killing joke one and then like a couple other ones but not every one of them though the next one here though um from severin films is a movie called the survival survivor and i got kind of confused with this too because there's another movie that was kind of like this called like i think like soul survivor but that's that one was about a woman that like had a, it was like a similar kind of movie a little bit but this one is called the survivor it's basically though about a, a plane crash and everyone in the plane crash dies except this one guy who come you know comes out of there with like basically hardly any injuries to him and stuff 
definitely like the kind of movie that's sort of like inspired an unbreakable type film like those kind of like you know everyone's injured and or dies and except for one person and they're all kind of looking at him like how has he lived here you know how has he survived through this it's a pretty creepy movie and it's from like 1981 which like i said i had never seen this one i saw the other movie that was kind of a similar type movie this also inspired i, I would say things like final destination and stuff but when he comes back and you know doesn't die in this things around the town are starting to happen and like people are starting to see really weird stuff and it's pretty much you know the guy's the captain on the plane and they're trying to kind of figure out exactly how he survived what exactly happened on the plane why the plane went down and then what's going on around there and why these people are seeing like these ghostly kids and all this creepy stuff that's going on it's a very very creepy odd movie like i said i had never seen before it has on here though um some interviews on here uh, an archival tv special on here which is like on location like you know why they were shooting this and then as well as like some other tv interviews on here an extended scene on here uh but like i said pretty cool movie the next one here this is one i really wanted to see because it's directed by jared Cohn, who directed the i worked with him on two different movies one movie called uh the valley drowners i think it's called drowned now it has it, it's no i think it's called death pool and then um uh uh, the other one as well was called The Devil's Domain. I'm pretty sure that's the current title on that. But I worked with one of two ones. And this is the movie that he did. I remember him talking about this. And I really wanted to see this because it has, you know, um, Bill Mosey was in this for like a little cameo. And it's a movie called The Horde. And it's sort of like a, um, kind of like a Hills Have Eyes mixed with Wrong Turn kind of movie. I actually really liked this because it, it, it was like, normally, you know, when they have like those kind of groups of like crazy killers in the woods, they're kind of like, they don't have a huge like discussion about exactly what they're doing this one they kind of go into more details about them it's also like a huge group of like these crazy people instead of like just like a couple it's like a gigantic it's, it's called the horde because it's this huge group of them like all these crazy people and like and it's basically though about a, this uh photography class it goes out there to kind of take pictures and things like that out into the woods and they go out there you know for the trip you know the photography trip and um to take pictures and everything and then of course though they get out there and the one guy though is like sort of ex-military he got out of the, the, the i think it was the navy or the military and he's out there and of course though these crazy people that are out in the middle of the woods are attacking the kids and then the one woman gets like kidnapped and he kind of has to go and be kind of like john ramble because it also has like a ramble kind of vibe of him going and trying to stop everybody and kind of like get them that's that's pretty much what it was i, I said i really like this one and it kind of had like sort of like the latest season it was before this though but it was filmed before that but it kind of had like the feel too of like the current uh the, the last american horror story f series a little bit as well but i really like this like i said it's like a kind of like you know mixing all those together like you know rambo mixed with like wrong turn and all and and you know hills have eyes together into one movie the next one here it's a really odd movie called Space Clown. This is from Wild Eye Releasing. I really, really like the cover on this one. This is an extremely quirky, weird, found footage movie. And it star you know, Graham Skipper directed this one and stars in this one. He was recently in that Beyond the Gates and a couple other movies lately. He's actually pretty cool. And I think he made this one, I think, a couple of years back. And it's like a weird found footage movie. It's all kind of him just sort of messing around with the camera. And it's like a real, like, true kind of found footage thing. Cause it's like just like sort of him in his house showing like his things like touch talking to his girlfriend and just like sort of random stuff going on of course though he you know sees this kind of thing in the sky and it's a space clown from like a crazy spa you know clown from space and the space clown is kind of like you know um kind of tortures him and his friends and he's doing all these weird things and he's telling like these really bad corny ridiculous jokes it's like not the like best made movie or anything like that but that's what kind of makes it ridiculous it's just like it's a movie you, it's it's almost like a spoof and like a like a spoof version of a found footage movie because it just takes things to just these crazy levels it doesn't really work as a found footage movie like i said it's more to take it more as a spoof like a ridiculous kind of over the top type found footage movie and it has on here though a behind the scenes thing on here which is like some of the stuff when they were shooting this one the next one here is from Wild Eye releasing as well. This one's called Creature Lake. This was like about a group of, it's another found footage movie. And this was like dealing with like a, you know, an indigenous tribe and like these group of these people who go out to this area where they kind of had heard like there was like kind of like sacred land and they go out there and start messing around. And of course, though, you know, you mess around and go in these kind of areas where they really shouldn't be 
things start to happen and they see this kind of like ghostly type woman out there like like this creaturey type woman that's kind of lurking around and of course like bad things start to happen to them while they're out there it was kind of a fun one and like i said it, it's a a different kind of take on the whole found footage things it, it's, I, it's like i've been watching so many found footage things lately so i kind of mix up some of the stuff that goes on in them but like i said this one was basically though this them going to an area where they really shouldn't have where they heard like kind of the legend of this whole area and of course like they're like i said they're out there messing around and things start to happen to them the next one here is another one it's a, kind of a a comedic take on bigfoot movies like an over-the-top bigfoot movie it's called bigfoot the movie and i i feel I, I don't know if this was from a couple years ago i i think there's another movie that kind of had a similar name like bigfoot something unless i, I had I, maybe i had saw this movie a long time ago like i can't remember but i know this one is like just come out though from wild eye but i might have seen it like or heard of it or mixing up with one that trauma put out i can't remember though that had like a similar type title but this one like is basically though like these like these redneck kind of friends sort of like larry the cable guy like over the top redneck type friends out there who like believe that they like had seen bigfoot it's kind of them you know because of like they, you know one of their friends that ended up dying from bigfoot and it's kind of them going to try and like kind of prove that it was bigfoot that did it and they're kind of setting up a whole like, kind of plan of how they're going to like capture him or if they're going to like document footage and because like the whole people in the town kind of laugh at them and don't believe them when they're kind of talking about this saying that it was Bigfoot and like they really want to like go out and kind of catch him it's kind of them on their their whole like task of trying to catch Bigfoot it's a very very I think it was made in like Pittsburgh and in Pennsylvania, I think it was Pennsylvania. So it has like, everyone kind of has like the, if you know, like the area of Pennsylvania and stuff, because I lived in originally in Maryland. So I always kind of knew people if they were from there because you kind of had like the accents and everything. And like, they kind of play all that, that all up in this. And it has a lot of people too that are like known and it is Pittsburgh. You know, who are kind of known from Pittsburgh in the area, like um, some like local celebrities and stuff like that out there. So it was kind of a fun, like I said, over the top, like ridiculous Bigfoot type movie. This one too. This one is from um, Brink, and it's a movie called Territorial Behavior. And I like the concept of this because it was about a guy who's kind of like Survivor Man, you know, who just goes out and, like, you know, does, like, he's basically trying to pitch a, a course that he's teaching, which is, like, teaching, you know, survival and, like, getting people to kind of come out with him and go on, like, these ter things where he kind of teaches them how to survive out there. And he's going to produce, so he's going out there by himself with just, a, like, a couple of different cameras, and he wants to make his own, like, pitch video to kind of get people to watch this video or pay for the video exactly what he's doing and he's i think he's just trying to get people recruited to his group so he wants to make this video to kind of show them the kind of stuff that they can learn if they go out with him to the woods and he goes out there and it's basically just like almost like the raw footage of him out there like making the fire doing all the things but of course though then he sees these people out there that are kind of lurking around and he's like i'm trying to film out here guys could you guys leave and of course as soon as he gets out there weird things start to happen to him him and you kind of see people messing around with their tent and it's kind of one of those things when it's like is it those guys is it some kind of creature out there and you're kind of just trying to watch it to figure out and he's getting like more and more creeped out throughout the whole thing it was a different type of thing because like i said i i always wanted to kind of see a movie like this about like some kind of survivor man type guy going out there and then dealing with something like this happening uh, the next one here, though, and this one is like a giallo film, but it's made for, made in Ireland. And the other, and the thing that really like you know steals the show with this movie, this one is from a company called Summer Hill Video. Um, and it, but the thing that really steals the show to this movie is the music. It's got really cool music. I think I found online too. I think they're like have like some like the people that made it have like the download up or they have them up you can listen to them on youtube but look up the music if you guys like you know like italian kind of like 80s synth type music it's got that real vibe what's like what's kind of funny though is it's like a giallo film from from ireland so it's like a whole different thing it even has like the one actor in this who was like in um he was recently in violent shit like the newest violent shit movie but he was also in um cannibal ferox uh house on the edge of the park i always really loved that guy and he's like i feel like he's like starting to come back and be in a lot more things recently like a lot of cameos and stuff but i always thought he was a really cool actor but he's in this one like a couple little scenes in this movie it's basically though about these sisters that are kind of like after this funeral one of their family members, I think it was their uncle or their father, I can't remember, but they all, like, after that, they start kind of getting hunted down, and people start killing them, and it's all filmed in that real giallo type, if you know, like, Italian type films, like, with that kind of vibe and look to it, and it's very creepy kind of thing, 
like I said, the really the big st like starting point to this to me was the music. They had some really, really cool music and some cool throwback kind of deaths in this one. If you guys like those kind of movies, though, this is definitely one worth watching, though, I would say, for that kind of look. It's not like a huge budget thing or anything like that. It's just got a really cool vibe. Now, the next one here is from um, Umbrella Entertainment. And this is like a six-disc disc set. It's like a compilation-type set called um, Australia... 50 years of Australian television and it has in here these like all kind of like clips and like from talk shows and like survivor type shows and like big brother type shows and all these kind of things from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And it's basically, like I said, it's just like kind of weird, like bloopers from the news. And I was watching through a bunch of these ones. I will, I will mention though, um, this one though is it said it was all region, but when I put it into the regular, you know, the non-region free blur, the free region free DVD player, it didn't play. It said it was like PAL or something, and so I had an issue. None of the other ones, though, I've ever got from um, Umbrella Entertainment had ever, you know, I had to actually put into a, a region free player or you know an all region player. So I will warn you guys, though, this one at least this version was. I this, this may be an earlier copy of it or something, so I don't know. I have to check with them. But as far as I know, this one, when I actually put it in, though, for some reason, I had to, I checked all the discs. I had to put that in there. But if you guys are interested in basically seeing stuff from, like, talk shows and all that kind of stuff, all from Australia, it's kind of a cool thing. It would definitely be cool if they did, like, other kind of this, this the group that put this together did other things like this. Because I always love these kind of compilation type things. The next one here, and I recently talked about these ones a couple, like, a month or so back or a couple weeks back. And this is, you know, the DVD edition. This one, though, is region-free, so you can watch this in any player. This is the, the Ninth Life of Lewis Drax. It's a pretty interesting movie. You know, it has uh, Aaron Paul in this, and it's basically though, about this kid who is basically cursed, and he's always basically having these terrible accidents, or he's finding out he's allergic to certain things, and he's basically dying, and, like, just about dying, and he's got, like, the worst luck in the world. And in this movie, he ends up falling off of this cliff, and he ends up going into a coma, and it's basically about the doctor who kind of comes in to try and figure out if he can get him out of the coma, and kind of talking to the parents and figuring out exactly what had happened him and it kind of flashes back to uh exactly like other weird events that happened to this kid in his life and you know you see aaron paul in like the flashbacks and right before he goes off the cliff and you're wondering like exactly where is aaron paul and you're kind of starting to figure out exactly as this movie goes on exactly what's going on here but it was actually a pretty interesting movie the director of this you know directed the um you know high tension and the hills have eyes remake and stuff but i actually thought this was actually pretty cool weird trippy movie it has like some pretty trippy like dream sequences is with the kid too when he's like you know in the coma and stuff when he's like kind of going out of his body and stuff and the next one here and this is the DVD edition of Stakeland 2. And I realized I have the first, I thought I had never, you know, didn't own the first Stakeland, but I own it. So now I've got to, at some point, when I have some free time, watch the first one because I had never seen it. I always had it and somehow I never watched it. But I don't think you really have to have seen the first one to get this one. I will say the cover on this is very cool. Like, I actually like this a lot more than the U.S. cover. It's just a really, really cool cover for this. This is basically, though, about the kid that, you know, from the first movie, though, from, from what I could, like, explain this. And the person who who kind of trained him to fight the vampires so the world is kind of being overtaken by vampires he has to kind of try and find him where he is and it's kind of his journey of trying to figure out exactly where he is going through like the desolate like abandoned type area where he is which you also you can't like trust anybody and he comes across like this weird couple that are like cannibals and all these kind of weird characters and it's a pretty cool vampire movie like it's like a different kind of vampire and they really put a lot of work to in like the makeup of the vampires and making them really like a creepy look to them kind of like they sort of remind me a little bit like of the blade movies they like the blade like the look of the and the character vampires in the blade films has on here though a making of on this and the theatrical trail and like i said this one was a region free one as well so you can play that in all the play the next one here is from Umbrella Entertainment as well. This is a movie called Sugar Mountain. And this is pretty cool. This is like about these two brothers who have like a fishing boat. And they kind of take their, but their boat is ending up getting like repossessed because they didn't pay like the docking fees. And they're like late on their bills for these other things. And they both come up with this idea of like um, staging that one of the brothers goes out into the Alaskan area. Because they, they stage this whole thing about them getting in a fight because the one guy likes the one's girlfriend. And they get in this huge fight and they stage this whole thing. And they basically what they think they can do is have the one brother who has no survival skills out in the, you know, Know, into the Alaskan like area like that goes missing and then the here when he you know he ends up being discovered later
later on, then they can write the story and sell it to the newspapers and sell it and maybe make a movie out of it and kind of that or kind of fix all their problems. Of course, though, the one guy goes out to do this and because of some of the mistakes they did, they're looking at the one brother and thinking that maybe he killed him because he bought this knife and it was all these kind of things and it kind of becomes this huge thing and you really don't know where they're trying to figure out where this brother is. And maybe something really did happen to him when they actually staged it. It's actually a pretty interesting kind of movie about them all trying to figure out what's going on out there. I always like these kind of movies too. They're all set like out in like the like the snowy type areas and stuff like that. The next one here, this is from Breaking Glass Entertainment, and this is a movie called The Creature Below. This is like a, I think it was one of the, um, you know, the H H P Lovecraft stories. And it was kind of making, reminded me a little bit of that movie called Dagon, Dagon, a little bit. It was like, I was just thinking of that, that movie a little bit when I was watching this. It's basically though about this, um, the girl, this girl who goes down in this like, um, kind of submarine type thing looking for like things below the ocean. And she ends up discovering this kind of creature that's out there when she goes down, you know, into this, uh, kind of like, sort of like, sort of, I guess like a suit kind of thing, looking at the ocean and like going really far down. But she discovers this type of weird creature and she ends up, you know, sort of smuggling away when she does what her work that she's there, ends up taking it back to her house. And then of course, like she's like kind of studying it and then weird things start to happen and stuff like that. It's a pretty cool, like, like I said, it for some reason was making me think of Dagon. I think that was actually based on an H.P. Lovecraft kind of story. And he had always had a lot of things that dealt with, like, kind of weird with his stories. Really weird creatures and monsters and stuff like that. But this has on here, though, behind the scenes, the lead scenes, uh, the Rat short film, and then a Fear Fest Q&A on this one. Uh, the next one here, this is from... Um, uh, from Monarch Entertainment, it's a movie called Fatal Instinct, and this is basically like, in, in like one of those kind of cop kind of films when you're like trying to figure out. I don't know if this was for TV or not. I, I, I wasn't sure on that, but it was one of those kind of cop movies, and it was like. Um, there's like basically a killer going around killing these people and the cops are kind of looking into it and figuring out exactly who it is and like they're starting the one cop is starting to look make it like starting to think that it might have be actually because like the one cop's brother had kind of committed these crimes in the past and he's kind of like looking at the one's brother and thinking that maybe he's responsible for these murders and he's kind of trying to talk his partner into like believing that maybe his brother has done this and of course it's like a whole big thing between them and it's kind of them trying to kind of put the pieces together and exactly figure out who who it is that's killing them and kind of talking to the witnesses and then you know the more and more people start piling up it's, it was actually kind of interesting i always kind of like these kind of cop type films and this one it's funny i actually saw like some of the behind the scenes of this movie and like wondered what this was on like i think i for some reason i randomly watched like a couple episodes of like it was like one of those like shows on like vh1 or like one of those weird networks it was like um marriage boot camp or something and i tara reed was on that and i remember she was like not coming to the taping of marriage boot camp because she was filming this movie i remember that and i remember that i was like what was that i kind of wanted to see this and it's kind of a bollywood type film sort of but it was i'm pretty sure it was all filmed in uh los angeles because that's at least that's where she was shooting her stuff but it's a movie called tie the knot it's basically about tara reed's character who like recently loses her job and she doesn't like know what she's going to do and she kind of wants to take this big trip because she's kind of like depressed about what had happened to her with her job and she ends up you know and then it also deals with this one girl who's from here's her family's from india and her father has a heart attack and she you know she has to go back to her father so it's both tara reed and this girl going back to india at the same time she goes there on a trip to try to get away and it's kind of like the girl from india's like parents are all kind of persuading her that they really want her to like meet a man who's indian as well and get married and they're kind of like when she, when she goes back there they're trying to like force her into going on these dates and like you know with men that are the indian men there and it's like it's that kind of movie it's like um they did a documentary documentary called meet the patels or patels and it was kind of like the family was kind of like persuading their son it was like a real movie like persuading her son though to date you know find a girl a woman that was indian as well it's kind of an interesting thing and tara reed kind of becomes friends with them i thought it was kind of a fun movie though i i, I always kind of i feel like i watch a lot of tara reed movies and like i said i kind of like i said i saw that thing when she was making that thing you know, that uh, marriage boot camp thing i really wanted to see what that movie was and the last one here from mvd um is a movie called down on the farm 
this is like they they released I think it's from from their you know R squared company and they released a couple of different like animated kids films lately and this one Bill Obers Jr. who's like a great like you know horror movie actor if you guys like see a lot of indie you know I watch tons and tons of indie horror movies he's like in like so many of them he's a really cool like horror character actor and like a lot of stuff but he actually does a voice in this um and it's a movie called Down on the Farm and it's basically though about like um this like flying pig character and like there is someone like stealing on this farm like these these this hay and like the food and the flying pig character has to go around and like figure out exactly who did this on the farm he goes around and, like talks to the farm animals and kind of tries to like get to the bottom of exactly who was doing this and, you know like i said this is definitely way more for little kids but i think like little kids would like, get a kick out of this it's just like a and i think to me i just thought it was kind of cool seeing bill Obers jr do like a voice in this he did a voice too in like a dog movie i saw like too i think the guys might have been the same people to produce this i'm not sure though but like it was like a dog movie like a weird talking dog movie but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video thanks again for watching and subscribing and i'll see you guys later bye